This Tobacco University video will help hopefully provide you with some information about the human endocannabinoid system, how the brain receptors as well as immune system re relate to CB1 receptors and CB2 receptors. Uh, and this will all be explained here in this video lecture. All right, let's get into the human cannabinoid system, focusing both on the immune system, which is really focusing on the gland called the thalamus, and the CB2 cannabinoid receptor and T cells with our immune system, as well as the brain with the CB1 cannabinoid receptor here, uh, relating to this whole endocannabinoid system that can be quite complex. The hope here is to break it down in simple terms. So first off, understand that there are different cannabinoids, uh, just in general. Uh, different variants of cannabinoids include side chain, uh, as well as a whole bunch of other ones listed here. And we can see the kind of organization of the general side chain ones. Uh, we see a lot of high familiar names, CBG, CBD, Delta 9 THC, Delta 8 THC, CBN, uh, and we can see some of their structures here as well. Uh, they are produced not only in cannabis, but also by species of liverworts, rhododendrons, as well as other species, even fungi as well. The cannabinoids themselves are defined generally as a specific species of uh, terpenoid molecules that has the potential to interact, interact with the endocannabinoid system, typically abbreviated ECS. So do not forget about terpenes, uh, as we are focusing on cannabinoids, don't forget about terpenes. There are also some terpenes that interact with the endocannabinoid system. One established example of this is the effect of beta chlorophthalamine, which has been identified as a CB2 antagonist, acting uh, as an algestic as well as a suppressor of neuroinflammation, making it a candidate for the treatment of MS or multiple sclerosis. So keep in mind we're talking about this antagonist, well this is where we're kind of getting this activation that occurs and we get kind of that full activation where drugs that copy receptors and activate them. Uh, we also have uh, an anti-agonist where we have basically no activation where we're blocking um, that. Now, if antagonist and an agonist kind of interacting, well, we still get some reaction, but because they're kind of competing for that active site, we get a reduced um, activation there. So we could have no activation, full activation, or less activation. So you could see just in this short example some of the complexities that do occur uh, within these interaction systems, particularly when we're looking at receptors. So the cannabinoids, so for getting back to generally the cannabinoids, your own body contains a system of endogenous receptors and ligands which work to regulate a vast number of cellular functions and tissues throughout your entire body. Cannabinoids uh, actually play a vital role in maintaining homeostasis in your body. At least two of these cannabinoids are produced in your own body and they're listed right here. So what's kind of what we're looking at is we have our receptors, we have our neurons, we have our receptors, we have chemical signals being released. The synapse is the gap between uh, the neurons and is a physical space where they're being kind of gone through space and they're being recepted here and then inducing a um, response there. Now we have certain uh, within our endocannabinoid systems, we have some that are basically analogs of basically the THC molecule, which means they basically represent a very similar shape to THC as well as CBD. Now we have this negative feedback loop, which means in some cases when we're getting this response that will cause a response that will kind of subdue that effect. We don't want to keep having an additive effect. We don't want to keep having um, uncontrollable nerves, so here we're having, in some cases, there are, can be negative feedback loops. Negative, a lot of people think, like, is a bad thing. Negative just means it's gotten the signal and it's suppressing more signal from being released there. So again, that just helps the body maintain that homeostasis, those proper internal conditions, despite a changing environment around it. So talking about that CB1 and CB2 receptor targets, just in the general sense, and they, uh, CB1, or the CB, stands for cannabinoid receptor. And the cannabinoid receptor 1 and cannabinoid receptor 2. Uh, they determine the behavioral effects of cannabis when consumed, as well as the effects your your own body's own cannabis chemicals, uh, 2-AG and anatomine. Those are the analogs to the um, 
cannabis produced signals as well. Now keep in mind our CB1 targets are looking at motor activity, thinking, appetite, short-term memory, uh, pain perception, as well as some involvement with immune cells. CB2 receptor targets are the guts, uh, the gut, the t kidneys, pancreas, bones, eyes, potential tumors, immune system, skin, as well as central and cardiovascular systems. Those CB2 receptors typically are located more on immune cells, and then CB1 receptors located more on the neurons there. And this kind of color codes where you're more likely to find a CB1 or a, uh, sorry, a CB1 or a CB2 receptor there. So looking at the CB1 receptor, just in a little bit more detail here, they are expressed uh, most densely in the central nervous system and are largely responsible for mediating the effects of cannabinoid binding within the brain. Endocannabinoids released by depolarization neurons bind with CB1 receptors on presympathetic uh, gl glutamatic and, C and GABA uh, neurons, resulting in a receptive decrease in either glutamate or GABA release. And GABA is just one of those um, hormones involved with uh, chemical signal transduction. There's strong presynaptic local localization of CB1 receptors and their inhibi inhi inhibition of voltage-dependent calcium channels and aldolene uh, cyclase suggests that the primary function of CB1 receptors might be to inhibit neurotransmitter release. That's why I talked about that negative feedback loop. Inhibiting neurotransmitter release may not necessarily always be a bad thing. And again, focusing on CB1, they're throughout the human body, particularly the hypothalamus, um, as shown earlier, related to memory, um, appetite regulation, and emotional processing. Now, I also mentioned CB2 receptors. We can see them right here, and they're primarily found on immune cells, particularly cells of macrophage lineage, and it has to do with your own body's immune system. These receptors only indirectly affect neuro neurological functions, and modulating CB2 signaling could be promising for the treatment of various inflammatory conditions. So because CB2 receptors are more peripheral nervous system or immune system, they can be potentially to reduce inflammation or response to diseases. And inflammation could be just body inflammation, uh, rheumatoid arthritis would be another example of uh, effectiveness at reducing uh, inflammation. And then lastly, just kind of a general summary picture here of the human endocannabinoid system. It does, it is very complex. Hopefully this kind of uh, gives you some understanding of it. We're looking at the CB1 receptors are primarily found in the brain and central nervous system, lesser extent other tissues. And then that uh, CBD does not directly fit into CB1 or CB2 receptors, so that's an important note uh, in receptors, but has powerful indirect effects still being studied. So just because it doesn't fit into one of these particular receptors, it can still have an impact. THC actually has a closer proximity matching and shape, conformational shape to CB1 receptors, and CB2 is looking closer resemblance to the shape of CBN. And those CB2 receptors are mostly in the peripheral organs, especially cells associated with the immune system. So this is all great when looking at potential for pain modulation, appetite uh, suppression, uh, anti-inflammatory effects, other immune responses, uh, looking at these CB1 and CB2 receptors that naturally exist in the body, and how compounds produced by cannabis plants may influence the human endocannabinoid system.